Want to build responsive Tailwind CSS grids visually with no code? In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that with the grid component in Elements. It's fast, intuitive, and honestly, kind of fun. You don't need to understand utility classes, breakpoints, or even CSS. This is just clean, visual layout building powered by Tailwind under the hood. In this video, I'm going to be using Elements for macOS. If you haven't already got a copy, download a trial from elementsapp.io. Elements is a powerful website builder for macOS. It gives you a visual Tailwind editor directly on your Mac. It's super powerful and it's also easy to use. So I'm in Elements for macOS and I've got a few grid demos set up just to show you what we're going to be building in this video. Here you can see a very basic two column layout. If I scroll down, I've got something more advanced with four columns and then even more advanced, I've got a bento style layout set up here. As I say, we're gonna be building all of this and more throughout this video. And if we've got time, I'll even show you how I built these animations as you roll into the grid. Okay, with that being said, let's start with a basic two column layout. So I've got a blank page open here and I'm on the components tab. All I need to do is drop the grid component into the page. Now, what we can then do is adjust all of the settings for this grid. I'm going to turn on the preview columns for now, just so we can see what we're working with. Now, by default, elements as a four column grid to the page. You can adjust that by adjusting the slider here. And you can see that getting live updated in the editor. For this demo, we only want two columns, but I am gonna add some gap horizontally and vertically. Okay, so we can see we've now got this two column grid layout set up. I'm gonna turn off the preview so we can better see the content that we're working with. I am gonna add a little bit of spacing though, just to give us a bit of room either side of the grid. Okay, now to add items to the grid, you can add any component you want. So let's start with an image. I can drop that into the tree view here or directly onto the page. Once I've got an image on the page, I can use one of my resources and I can simply drop that onto the image. If we want something else on the grid, as I said, we can drop any component we want into a grid and that will become a grid item. Elements for macOS gives you almost all of the utilities available in Tailwind inside of their components. So you can see here, I could drop a flex item into here and that will place it directly onto the grid. If we wanted some text inside of there, we can simply drop a text component straight in there. And you can see now how we're starting to build up a two column grid layout. It's so easy and so powerful to do this. Now, what we do want to take into mind is that we should be working mobile first. Elements has uh, devices set up automatically for you, but you can go to the theme studio here and adjust those. We won't be doing that right now. We'll just use the standard setup here. So you can see here, I'm on the mobile uh, device. And really what we want is a one column layout on mobile and perhaps to go up to two columns uh, when we come up to tablet or desktop. So to do that, just make sure your grid is selected here. Go to your columns and rows settings and we can change this back down to one. So you'll see that this now gets stacked on top of each other. Now, as we come up, perhaps when we come up to tablet here or maybe a larger mobile, we want to go to a two column layout. So Elements has responsive overrides built in for every single control. So to do that, all we need to do is click on this little gray dot next to any of the controls. So in this instance, we wanna go from one column on mobile to two columns. So we click the gray dot, that will turn blue to show you that you've overridden it for this device. And we simply go up to two columns. So now as we go down to one column, we're stacked on top of each other. As we come up where we've overridden that setting, we go to two columns. So this is a visual responsive Tailwind editor straight on your Mac. It is so powerful and so easy to use. Okay, so this is the basics of creating a, a really simple two column layout. I'm gonna show you some more advanced examples later, but as I say, we can drop any components we want into the grid. 
So if we wanted more text, we could just duplicate that into here and you'll see that that gets added on the second row. So again, if we turn on the preview, you can see here we've got uh, two columns and this one's getting chucked down onto the second row because we've got three items now. If I were to duplicate that again, you can see it then gets placed into the second column. We'll have a look at rows later on, but for now, let's go back to just having two items on the grid and we'll disable the preview. So now we could style this uh, exactly in the same way that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Uh, I'm gonna leave that to you. Uh, you can come into here and you can live edit this text. Uh, you can add perhaps a heading above here if you wanted to. You get all the uh, standard tailwind controls that you're probably used to. Uh, on the flex, there's all the flex box settings to set the uh, horizontal vertical gap. So we can space out this content slightly. Uh, we've got uh, sizing, obviously for text, you can make things bold, italic, you name it. Uh, all of the controls are available to you here. We can even change the uh, tag for this element. We can have this as an H2. Again, you just double click into here and live edit the text like so. Okay, so we could continue with this, but I'm gonna leave this basic two column layout for now. And we're gonna move on to a more advanced example with those uh, team cards. So I'm on my team cards page. And as you can see here, I've set up a grid with four items. I've also used a couple of other components here, such as a container that will contain our content. Um, uniformly across the entire site if we want to. Uh, and inside of the container, I've placed the grid. So you don't need to put the grid at the root of the page. You can put the grid anywhere you want on your page. This is a visual editor. You don't need to be constrained about where you can place grids. You can put it absolutely anywhere you want in your design. Okay, so in this instance, you can see here, I've got uh, four cards coming across on desktop. So I've already set up the responsive um, settings for this grid. Now, if you hover over the uh, blue dot here, you should see in the menu bar, you can see a blue dot for where this setting has been overridden. So which other devices uh, have, have this setting overridden. So you can see it's also overridden on the tablet. So if I go down to here, this is where we actually override to four. So when I come down to mobile, we're on one. And as we come up, if I hover over here, you can see where I've overridden the setting. So we can come up to tablet here. Now, if we didn't want four on here, these are kind of squashed up. Because we're already overriding the setting for this device, we could pull this down to two and that will give us a two column layout. If we come up to desktop, you'll see it then goes to four. So if we just uh, pull this down, you can see we're one to two to four. So as we go up through the devices, we can set how many columns we want and it just all works visually and it's like magic. Everything's instantaneous. Um, we can do everything visually straight inside of Elements. Okay, let's say that we have a few more grid items. So I'm just gonna duplicate each uh, person here. So I'm gonna select all of these and push Command D. That's gonna give me four more. So we can see we've got eight. Now, as I, as I go through the devices, you can see everything just works. So I can just go through here and you'll see that we get all of the layout as expected visually inside of Elements. Now, as I showed in the uh, simple two column layout, we can also adjust all of the other grid settings. So for example, we can have a gap, so we can make this larger uh, horizontally. We can also make it larger vertically. We could also um, pull these up so that they're butted up against each other like so. Now, and this, uh, this obviously works just in the same way as the columns. So we could come down to uh, mobile here and perhaps we actually wanted the vertical gap to be five on mobile. Now, as we come up to a tablet, you'll see we have um, we have a two column layout. So we're gonna need to set something horizontally. So we could just set this or we could override this here. So we can set this to five as well. Now, when we come up to desktop, we might want the spacing to be slightly larger. So once again, we can override and set this to be 10. 
And if we want the vertical to be the same, we can also that set that to 10 there. Okay, hopefully you're starting to see the power of visually editing grids directly inside of a Mac app. Let's move on to a more advanced example. Okay, so I'm on the Bento grid example page. Now, as you can see here, we've got a bit more of an advanced uh, grid setup. We've got this kind of two column layout above and three column layout below. Now in here, you can see in the tree view, I've got a grid component. Uh, all I've done is rename this to be uh, from grid to Bento. So you can do this with any of the components in here. You can simply hit enter and rename those. Uh, that just helps you visually uh, know what you're working with. So I just called that Bento. Now this, as I say, it's just a standard grid component from Elements. And all I've done is set up the columns to be uh, six. So we've got six columns available. Uh, at least on desktop. Now I've already set this up to be responsive. So you can see uh, things are stacked on mobile. And as we come up, the uh, the layout changes. So this is just using all of the same controls that I've shown you on the previous two examples. Uh, I've just set this up slightly, uh, slightly differently. So the key thing to know with this style of layout is that we need to use a container component to adjust the amount of columns or the width and height of each item on the grid. So all I've done is use the standard container component and you can see those here. What the container component allows you to do is act as a grid item. So on the Flexbox and grid settings for a container, all you need to do is set it to be a grid item. You then get access to settings for things like the columns and rows. So if I were to pull this down, you'll see everything live update, everything reflows. It still works, but because we are uh, taking up four columns now instead, this item will be butted down to the next row because we don't have space here. Now, if we were to change this to be seven rows, uh, seven columns, sorry, you'll see that that then pops back up because we've got four plus three is obviously seven. So that's why we can uh, have this layout. But um, yeah, I mean, if we wanted to, we could change this container uh, also to have uh, three columns. So you can see I've gone from that two column split at the beginning to this kind of different um, layout here. If you want to adjust where these um, where these grid items are, you can just rearrange them in the tree view here. You'll see that get instantly updated. Um, there are also advanced controls that I'm not going to go into right now, but you do get all of the um, all of the tailwind utilities here. So you can see you can set the start and the end, you can set the orders, things like that. We'll leave that for another video just because we're pressed for time here. Uh, so we go back to standard. But yeah, as you can see here, you can just uh, adjust the columns here and everything just automatically reflows. It is such an amazing experience to have this visual tailwind editor. Uh, it all just works instantly directly in the Mac app. It's so nice to use. Okay, let's, uh, let's pull that back to this style of layout. Um, or actually, what I want to show you is how we could adjust um, the rows as well. So right now, the grid just has auto rows. So we're not actually saying how many rows do we want. It's kind of just figuring it out itself. So if I just uh, enable the overlay preview, what we can do is set um, that we want to have three rows, two rows, you know, in the same way that we had columns, we can set how many rows we want. So we can leave it as auto and that will work out that we've got two and that will probably be okay for this demo that I want to show you. Uh, however, I just want to show that you can adjust the rows as well as the columns. Now, let's pull this one down slightly. Uh, so we've got this kind of layout and we've got this kind of space um, above here. Now, what I'd like is if this um, this could flow over two rows. So if we just pull this up to be uh, in the third place here. And now what I want to do is get this to come down into the second row. So I'm on the container. All I need to do now is set the rows to two. And you can see that automatically gets updated. So the visualness of this is just such a lovely experience. I, I know I keep saying it, but you've really got to try this visual uh, grid editing to know 
just how nice it is to be able to build things visually straight on the screen, instantly updating. It is just, it is so wonderful. Um, anyway, hopefully you're kind of seeing the types of layouts that you can build yourself. Um, you can do multi-row multi -row layouts, you can do multi-columns. Uh, you can see how quickly I've changed this layout just by changing a couple of settings um, on the different containers. When you do this, everything just reflows. It all just works. Um, it is just an amazing experience. So as I say, we can do things like this and you can see everything just reflow live there. Okay, before we wrap this up, I wanna share with you one little tip uh, or one little trick and nicety of uh, when you're using elements, you can uh, get these transitions on any of the elements or any of the components. So as you see here, when I roll into the grid here, you can see this elements logo comes in, the background here zooms up, and this button uh, kind of um, twists and moves up or scales up. So those things are available on pretty much every single component. Um, all you need to do is uh, choose your component. I've got the container here, just as a good example. Now we've got a background image set. Uh, what there, What's available are transform filters and effects. Uh, those ones will usually be the ones that you wanna use for these types of things, but um, there are others as well, but I'm just going to show you very quickly how this works. So on the background effects, we can apply this effect to just the background. Um, and this gives you a start and end state. So we could scale this down to say 60 and you can see that getting uh, applied instantly again in the editor. So all we've done here is set up a 100% scale um, from start and on the end, we're going to 120. So you can see that kind of zooms up um, in there. So the way we're darkening the image is with a filter. So again, we're just applying the effect to the background. We're saying hover and the start state, we've got brightness as 100. If I change this to 200, you can see that changing. That doesn't look very good, but it does show you uh, how it works. And the end state is brightness 70. So if you want to pull that down slightly, we can do that just by adjusting. So I'm going to set this to zero just to show you that that does work. Uh, there are so many other effects and filters and transitions that you can use. Um, you can make things blurred. So we could, uh, we could blur that slightly. So you can see that getting blurred. Let me do it a bit more so you can really see that working. And just to show you all of this works in the browser, you can just go and preview this and you can see all of the layout works exactly as expected. All of the hover animations happen. Uh, everything just works. It is like magic. So that is it for this video. I hope you've seen how powerful Elements for Mac OS is. And with the visual editor, you can build amazing grid layouts visually. You, There's no more guessing, okay? So this is just live, instantly updated. Um, you don't need to know any, any Tailwind. You don't need to know CSS. You can just update the settings that I've shown you and it live updates in Elements. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. I can't wait to see what you build with the grid component and elements. And if you get stuck with anything or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you there.